the power that broke to the to the the jaws of air the power that broke the chains in the pit of air the power that hits the lifeless body of Christ that infuses that body with life that causes that body to arose from the pit of hell that power is in you if there is a sickness that has a name that that sickness is under Christ if there is a marital problem that has a name it is under Christ if there is any problem you are going through that has a name that is under Christ Whatever you may be going through that as a name, that is under Christ's authority. Praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to Maximize Live, the television broadcast from New Wine Church London. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. You will never be the same again. Now here is your host, Pastor Michael Olaware. Welcome and thank you for joining me on this edition of Maximize Life. On this program, our aim is to challenge you to be all that you can be. I am Michael Olaware, the senior pastor of New Wine Church in London. Jesus established some principles for making a decree in Mark chapter 11, which I reveal unto this message. Let's find out more about this as I conclude this message titled, It's Time to Make a Decree. How come Jesus sent you? How come he sent you? And you are still wondering. And you are still afraid. And you are still unsure whether the enemy will yield to the command or not. How come? How come? If I call one of you here, and ask you to go to the head of ushers and get me a glass cup. As far as, as far as that is concerned, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. You will get to the head of the ushers knowing fully well that you will bring water back to me. But Christ sends you to take authority over the evil spirit and you are still not sure. When are you going to be sure? When are we going to be sure? He gave you authority that in the event that the purpose for which I have raised you up is about to be truncated, then apply what I've given you. Apply the force. Apply the authority. Apply what it takes. If that is a sick person, heal them. If that is a person with a, with a leper, heal them. If the enemy stands in your way, crush the enemy. As far as Christ is concerned, you are meant to be unstoppable. Yes. Oh my God, you are not answering me. I said you were meant to be unstoppable. Yes. Nothing was meant to stop and he said go. That means you don't go, not because he didn't give you what he takes. You did not use what he's given you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now follow me here to Ephesians chapter 1. We read from verse 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us will be, oh my God. The exceeding greatness of his power. Say, I've got the power. Say, I have got the power. Say, I have got the power. Say, I have got the power. Exceeding greatness of his power towards you. Who you know, the devil never wanted you to know who you are and what you have. If he can take those truths away from you, he has taken over forever. Number one, who you are. Number two, what you have. If you do not know who you are, you don't know your identity. That person is gone. And if you don't know what you have, in fact, that person is buried. Not just gone, it's not buried. It's out of existence, out of life. You don't know who you are. 
You don't know what you have. And those are the two things that the devil steals from believers. Their identity and what they have in Christ. You have the power. The Bible says the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. The same power that brought Christ out of the dead. Oh, Jesus, help me here. Jesus, help me here. Jesus, help me here. Just, just pray in the spirit. 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 Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Risk Labrano Sataya. Jelebo Predo Caparia. Brada Baba Bandoro Bulabadia. Risk Ketana Gabrano Caparia. Ere Macuria Gabadia. Endelebosha. Brano Curia Gabadia. Brado Capa. Rabus Cataya Brado Caparia. Remus Calabrado Capangadia. Ha. 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 You know, the Bible says. You may stop. The Bible says the exceeding greatness of the power of God is in you. And it describes that power so that you may realize. It says that's the power I use to raise Jesus up from the dead. The power that can bring life to any situation. I don't know what you are dealing with. That power that can change destiny, that can bring life back to that which is dead. That power, the Bible says in you. Now, if you study the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, very well, Apostle Paul was praying for the church in Ephesus that God will give you revelation knowledge so that you may know. So that you may know. Because the natural mind can never catch this revelation. The natural mind can never absorb it. The natural mind can never handle it. The same, God is saying, the same power that I exercised when I brought Jesus from the grave, that same power is in you. If you will receive, if you will receive this truth, if you will receive this cancer, your life changes forever. 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 The power that broke through the, to the, the jaws of air, the power that broke the chains in the pit of air, the power that heats the lifeless body of Christ, that infuses that body with life, that causes that body to arose from the pit of air, that power is in you. That power is in you. I hope to God that you are receiving something today. And you are not saying, look, this is just, this is just too good. This just, that's who you are. Now listen to this. In verse 20. Which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And seated him at the right hand. At his right hand in the heavenly place. Where is Christ now? At the right hand of God. This is the day. At the right hand of God where Christ is seated. That place is far above all principality, all power, all might, all dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. The Bible says where Christ is seated now, where he's seated, is far, how far is far? I'm serious. How far is far? Like two meters? 100 meters? Uncountable. No limit. No limit. Christ is seated. You see, Christ is seated in a position that is far above principalities and power. Rulers of the darkness of this world and dominion, and authority. He's so far away. In other words, in other words, they are not in the same class. They are not in the same class. But let me, let me, let me, let me now talk to you. How far from the principalities and power is your Christ? How far 
Because to some of us, Christ is so close. So much when we go through issues of life, we are not sure whether Christ will deliver us. Because your Christ is so close. As a matter of fact, your Christ is seated together with some principalities and power. Or maybe some principalities and power are even above your Christ. But not my Christ. Not my Christ. Not my Christ. That is the problem. That is the problem. The scripture gave us open check that Christ is seated far above. You have to determine how far your Christ is seated. You have to determine how far your Christ is seated. If your Christ is seated near the principalities and power, then there will be no, no, no result. But my Christ is seated far Yeah. Far above principalities and power. In other words, there is no parameters by which you can compare them together. You can know. You can know. That is where my Christ is. In other words, you see, the amazing thing is this. The Bible says, and every name that is named is also, Christ is far above them. If there is a sickness that has a name, that, that sickness is under Christ. Yes. If there is a marital problem that has a name, it is under Christ. Yes. If there is any problem you are going through that has a name, that is under Christ. Yes. Whatever you may be going through that has a name, that is under Christ's authority. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. And you need to know that. You need to recognize that. That everything you may be going through they are already under the authority of Christ. Now, this is the juice, really. This is the best part of this scripture. Let's turn to the second uh, uh, book in the book, of, second Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, sorry. We read from verse 4. But God was rich in mercy because of his great love which, with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. I raised us up together and made us see together. Can you get that? Can you get that? You are seated together with Christ. Also far above principalities and power. Far above dominion and authority. Far above every wicked spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Every sickness that has name in this world is under your authority. Every situation that has name in this world is under your authority. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. There is nothing the devil wants to bring your way that is not already under your authority. But you must know that. You must walk in the consciousness of that. So that when you are engaged in spiritual warfare, you don't lose sight of your position in the realm of the spirit. Praise the Lord. Let me share with you how a king, a king exercises his authority. King uses word. He uses word to make a decree. Kings declare things. The Bible says that in the book of Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only exercised by your authority. By speaking a word. Say to your neighbor, it's time to say something. Say, it's time to say something. Say, it's time to speak out. Don't just sit down there and allow the devil to continue to minister death to you. It's time for you to arise and declare something. It's time for you to arise and tell the devil, I know what the outcome should be, not you. It's time for you to realize the position you occupy. Devil is not your master. Devil is under you. 
The last time I checked in Ephesians chapter 2, devil is under you. Devil is under you. And so you must operate from that perspective, knowing fully well that the devil is under you. The man said, but only speak a word. I'm a servant to be healed. Only exercise your authority as a king by your word. Not your neighbor say it's time to say something. Say it's time to say something. Say it's time to declare the project. It's time to declare the outcome. You have to open your mouth and declare the outcome. There is power of life and death in your tongue. There is power in your tongue. You have the authority. The same power that brought Jesus out of the grave is in you. When Jesus was departing from this earth, he gave you the authority. He said, go and preach the gospel. Go and fulfill my mandate, my purpose for you. And anything that stands in your way, this is the authority. Crush them. Crush them. Amen. Say, I will fulfill my purpose. Say to your neighbor, there is power in your mouth. Say, there is power in your mouth. Say, there is power in your mouth. Now it's time to say something. It's time to say something, church. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's do an exercise. I want to, to count one to ten. Uh, just in your heart. Don't say it loud. Yeah. Don't say it loud. Just one to ten. At a stage, I will ask you to mention your name. Then say it loud. So, so one to ten, you're not going to say it. Nobody will hear it's not going to be audible, but when I ask you to mention your name, you say that loud, as loud as you can. All right, let's go. One, two, three. Say your name. All right, now, what happens to what you were counting, one to ten? You stop. You stopped. You sure? Really? That's what happened in life. When you open your mouth to speak, you interrupt the cycle of thought that the devil brings your way. You interrupt that cycle of thought. A lot of us just sit down. From morning to night, the devil is ministering. The devil ain't your pastor. The devil is not your pastor. It's not supposed to minister to you. Some of you, he even collected offering. I challenge you to the interrupt thought. Tell the devil you cannot speak to me. Use your word. Declare a thing and it will be established to you. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you want to sit down and make decrees, oh, oh my God. You know, every one of us needs to find a place that is quite just you alone. You alone. Sometimes you are your wife or you are your spouses. But, but you alone, I, I want to settle issue. I want to create something from the realm of the spirit and call yourself and begin to declare the outcome of situation. If there is sickness in your body, you can call yourself to a meeting, place your hand and declare that every disease that may be incubating your body, they die. Oh my God, your amen is too weak. Yeah. You can determine the course of your life. A whole lot of things you are dealing with today is because you allow. Yes. It's because you did not challenge situation. The Bible said when you resist the devil, the devil will stay. No. No. Many times, we don't resist the devil, but yet we entertain the devil. Many times. Many times. Let me share it. You don't have two lives. You have only one. God has commissioned you, called you for a purpose. You will not allow the devil to steal this one life away from you. No, 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 no. No, no. I am ready to give you what it takes. This life will not be stolen. This life will fulfill bandit. This life will fulfill purpose. There are people who die prematurely because they refuse to do things. 
There are people who are dealing with death today because they refuse to do things. There are people who have been crippled by the enemy because they refuse to do things. Oh my God, you have the power, you have the right, you have the position, you have the authority to tell the devil where to go. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you are making decrees, the first thing you must understand, never ever forget that, Never, ever forget. The first thing you must understand is that you are a king. Amen. Amen. You are not a subject. You are a king. Amen. You are a king. And you must speak from your position of advantage. Don't speak from a position of somebody who does not have any ground. You are speaking from the position of advantage. You are a king. And you must also realize that in Ephesians chapter 2, you have authority. You are above. You are above principalities and power. It's, it's, uh, it's out of order. It's out of order for the one that you are above to be ordering you around. It is out of order. It is out of order. Imagine in the days of slave trade that a slave begins to order the masters around. Then something is not right. That means that master does not know who he is. It's not right. It's not, there are certain things you must never, ever, ever, ever allow. You have authority in Christ. It is time to say something. It is time to decree. Jesus saw that fig tree. Oh my God. And Jesus said, no one eats any fruit of you any longer. Any longer. Now, this is the deal. The fact that you speak today and you don't see immediate result does not mean authority does not work. That fig tree didn't die immediately. It took 24 hours. The fact that you are spoken today and you don't see that result immediately because it's a spirit thing. The word that I speak, their spirit and their life. The word is a spiritual thing. It takes some time, so, so, some moments for the natural world to catch up with the spiritual world. It takes a time. So when you decree a thing, the father, you don't see immediate result. Don't tell yourself, I do not have authority. And let me also say this to you. Your situations around you, they don't determine your authority. Your authority was determined by Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Devil, whatever the devil is doing around you does not determine your authority. What is going on around you does not mean you do not have authority. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Don't allow the devil deceive you that you do not have authority to address issue. Say, I have authority. I have authority. Say, I have authority. I have authority. It is time, church, to say something. Friends, here are three undergirding principles about making a decree. Firstly, understand your position of authority as a king. Secondly, be aware of your position of authority in Christ. And lastly, make a declaration in accordance to God's will concerning that situation. Remember, you are a king. It's time to make a decree. Once again, thank you so much for all your emails and phone calls. Continue to keep in touch with us with all your testimonies, prayer requests, and comments. All the details you need are on your screen right now. Till the next time on Maximize Life, God bless you.